listen, listen, this wonderful sound reveals to the mind its true home. That's why I love the mindfulness bell because I love sound and sound is a perfect gateway, a door to our true home. But the door is always open. It's never been closed. It's actually not a door. It is a doorless door, a gateless gate. Don't you just love that Zen terminology? This is Brother Diamond, AKA Bhikkhu Nalika. And I'm happy to share with you the first of many short doses of Dharma. This is a dose of Dharma recorded by David Nelson. Today is Christmas, so Merry Christmas. And in general, we appreciate every day. We say waking up this morning, we smile. 24 brand new hours are before us. An opportunity to realize our true nature. And what is our true nature? That brings me to the topic of this session in the new series, A Dose of Dharma. What is self? What is the self? Me. What is I when I say David and I, she and I? I can be broken down into numerous forces and types of phenomena. There's the mind that discriminates, there's cognition, there's sound, there's photons of light traveling up the optic nerve once it hits the eye and it goes to over 30 visual centers in the brain. And then I see, there's the experience of seeing and the experience, the feeling of being a self sitting in the mind or sitting in the body. The feeling that there's something absolute, tangible in the mind or in the body. For most people, it's in the head. People are in their head, so to speak, all of the time. But even if that's not the case and you are more grounded and you feel present in the body, there's the feeling that there's a self in the body, but actually there's just an appearance. There are appearances in consciousness. This is all a play of consciousness. So practically, there is a self, me, Bhikkhu Nalika, Brother Diamond, sharing these words with you through this technology. But actually, this is just a play of consciousness, and there's no center to it. There's just appearances arising and ceasing ad nauseum. An infinite journey in this thing we call, or this field that we call reality. And so everything is intertwined. Without this technology, then I could not share this message with anyone other than David, who's here with me, or anyone who's walking by who can see and hear me. So it's very important to really investigate what is the self, what am I, who am I? And you can rephrase that in many different ways. Who am I is also what is self. Because when we talk about self, we're talking about who am I? This feeling of being a man, a monk with this particular form. And it's important to, for me to acknowledge that this is a valid cognition. This is a valid perception. If you have good eyesight and you are watching this on whatever device you have when it is posted, but also break it down and realize there's nothing absolute about any of this. All of this can be broken down into and reduction ad nauseum, reductio ad absurdum, meaning at a certain point in time, it is not beneficial to continue to reduce things down into something that you'll never discover, which is the ultimate root. We don't know what an ultimate root is. There are theories about some most fundamental particle or force but scientists have not found that and probably will never, at least not within many lifetimes of human beings discover something that is truly ultimate. There will just be an interplay of various forces and particles that will be given different names ad nauseum with no 
limit. So what I am, what we truly are, is ineffable, all pervasive, and tranquil by its very nature. It is like an ocean that's undisturbed. Things float in it. It is like space. Space is always here. You bring a lot of things into this room, there's still space. You take things out of space. Things enter and exit in space. True mind, what the self really is, is space. It's ineffable. It is beautiful in the sense that beauty appears in it. It is untainted. It is unsullied. It can't be stained. But the mind component, that's where the trouble starts. That's where there's discrimination. There's really a me here. And that's not the ultimate reality. That's not the subjective experience, which is actually just awareness itself. I am cold. I am warm. My left foot hurts. My right knee hurts. Actual fact. But am I the right knee? Or is there just the witness of the right knee that hurts? So I hope these words trigger a profound insight in all of the mind systems, people, selves who are watching this, so that you will understand that what is called the two truths, the ultimate truth and conventional truth, or absolute and relative, are very important as you navigate this thing called life. Because you'll need to know when to rightly own your conventionally valid self, but be able to deconstruct it or see through it. And that's how you will avoid the second arrow that the Buddha, the awakened one, talked about. Someone strikes me or I'm struck with an arrow, but I don't have to take it out and put it back in. I can realize, oh, there's just the witness of this pain, and the pain is impermanent, and the feeling of a self is also impermanent. Last night when I went to sleep with a soundscape playing, there was the sound and then no sound. And then I woke up and the earpiece, earpieces were still in my ear. And I said, what happened just now? Oh, that was a cessation of consciousness. Just in whatever time span there was from the moment when I was aware of the sound and blackout, and then coming back to awareness of the body, the sense of a self, you see, that's impermanent too. There's no constant sense of self, and we don't know that. And so we cling to this sense of self as if it is absolute, but it's not. Just like the device recording this, it will eventually disband. But the witness, that's something for us to investigate. And that's the best I can say. We must investigate the witnessing or the bare knowing aspect of life, of existence. That is closer to the true home. That is the true home. This space where everything arises and ceases, or like the ocean in which drops of water dissolve. Everything floats. Everything is sustained effortlessly. So thank you for listening. This is Bhikkhu Nalaka, AKA Brother Diamond. Be well, be happy, and investigate the nature of self to rest in your true home.